Hey folks, today I take you by the hand like a seven-year-old with a lot of toys to show you and I get into every single one of my tanks. Every one of my current projects, it's an all aquarium update. It doesn't happen very often, once every six months or so. And today, right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and we got a lot of aquariums to show you. I can't wait to show you all these tanks. These are all my current projects, and uh, maybe a few things that I've done for other people as well. Now, I'd like to start this update in a little bit different way than I usually do. We're going to go outside. If you could see just right outside over my shoulder, that's the, where the garden pond is. Now, that video, of course, came out a long time ago, and I've been actually pretty surprised at how popular that video has become. Not because it's a bad video or anything like that. I was just, I, was, I, I wasn't expecting that particular thing. Like, I'm not, um, I'm not the kind of person that's going to usually go out in the yard and dig a hole and, and, you know, and set something like that up. It's actually pretty unusual for me. So it was really cool to see so many people interested in it. And then later on, I did the bog filter and, the, and some plant videos about it and stuff like that. I've got a whole playlist for the pond if you're interested in, in seeing more. Of course, to me, the crown jewel of the bog filter in the pond is the pitcher plant, which uh, eats ants, basically. It's a little anteater. Each of those pitchers has a little pool of water inside, and uh, the ants drown in there, I suppose, and are later digested. Like that big thing in the middle of the desert uh, in Star Wars. Like that third one. Snarlack. Snarlack. As we come inside the house, of course, we're going to start on the other side of the room over there by the kitchen. Uh, with a spec 16 gallon tank. This is the tank uh, I look at the most. <laughs> I think that's a funny thing to say, but it's up there, it's, it's up higher than any of my other tanks, which makes it kind of a pain to keep up because I'm the only one that can really reach up inside the top there without a ladder or something like that. And even I'll maybe use a step stool to give myself a boost when I'm trying to really dig down into the tank. But not having to sit down to really uh, enjoy the tank is, is, uh, is pretty nice. I just kind of walk up to it and, and it's right there. And even when I'm eating or something like that, I can gaze up and it kind of gives you another kind of view of the tank. Most of the inhabitants of this tank are actually refugees from the face tank. There's sort of an interesting story with this tank uh, in that I set it up originally with a bunch of really high quality ADA aqua soil. It did okay. It really didn't grow or do anything much for a long, long period of time. Then I decided to replant it. I tried some other plants. Uh, I tried a few other things, and it just took off. Unfortunately, during the replanting and as I was changing stuff around, I ended up killing some of the fish that originally were in there. So that was a bummer, but I kept testing the water, and then uh, I, it actually looked fairly normal. But I kept testing the water and uh, when everything, when I was absolutely sure everything was okay and everything, the plants were really starting to thrive, I started adding things back to it gradually. Now, right about the time that that thing's really starting to, to look like it's, it's going to be a good tank, it's coming back and it's starting to look really promising, the face tank, the face tank had a meltdown. And then the face tank, suddenly, uh, it just, everything just went crazy. I was seeing dead cherry red shrimp, like I saw like a pile of cherry red shrimp that were dead. Uh, I picked, I've never seen anything like that before. And then I saw another, there's another little thing here and there. Now the other thing that's inside of this tank are my galaxy resboras and uh, oh man, I really love those tiny little fish. <laughs> They're my little bass! I gotta save my little bass! So what I did is I pulled the rocks out and I caught what I thought was all of them. Uh, the other thing that's in there is uh, the rosy loach. I've got some, I had, uh, I think, three rosy loaches in there. So I added them to the 16-gallon and uh, all those fish and whatever shrimp. I, got, I saved one really big amount of shrimp and a handful of the cherry red shrimp. I don't know how many lived. I know there's one really gorgeous big one in there now. And um, there might be more. It's kind of a thicket in the middle of, of this tank. And that's the way I, that's kind of the way I set up this tank. It's, it's got, it's a knot, it's a knot of wood with all kinds of uh, tall viney plants 
all around it. And I try to kind of have a variance of the, of the different types of plants uh, that are in there. I was a much better uh, aquascaper. I could name every one of those plants, but I, uh, right now I can't. If you look at the video from where I set them up, uh, I try to always put the name of the plant in there and I reference it later, but So a lot of times my setup videos are a little bit more informative than the updates But uh, if you see something you like you can maybe look back and see where it came from So the face tank was basically toxic at this point and I wasn't sure what to do I did probably my biggest water change ever. I thought I caught everything I drained the water down to about this much over the gravel maybe an inch and a half over the gravel after I drained a, uh, a bunch of the water into the bucket, I, I went ahead and I pulled the sponge out too and I kind of gave everything a rinse in the dirty tank water, even though it wasn't great dirty tank water. And then I put it, put it all back and made sure the filter was nice and clean and ready to go. Put the fresh water in there with a big healthy dose of Activate, which is basically like a liquid bacteria supplement. And I waited to see how it would do. I had a lot of plants die off and stuff. Um, it was, you know, whatever hit, it hit pretty hard. Turned out later I found out that I had missed uh, one uh, Galaxy Rasbora and one Rosy Loach. They were, um, so there's two fish in there at this point. And they're hiding all the time and I tried to go in there with a net, I just can't get them. Since I'm not dismantling the whole thing and uh, I've been doing water tests and, I, and not, it, you know, it was moving in the right direction, I just left them. Then maybe a week went by, you know, I'm putting as, as small amount of food as possible in there for the for the creatures that are still in there. Just kind of letting it do, you know, doing the normal water change. Then suddenly babies appeared in there, and now I'm raising eight other Galaxy Reservoir. So not only did the tank make a full recovery after that, it, uh, you know, babies hatched, and I'm, now I'm raising them. The tank is still not what it used to be. It was like so perfectly balanced before. And uh, it's starting to kind of teeter this way and that way. I need to, I need to, uh, uh, I need to work on that tank a little bit more to get it to where it needs to be. I'm really thinking about doing a rescape on that tank, and uh, that's probably something we'll see in in the near future. There are some plants that are seem to be thriving in there, but that the rocks are sort of holding them back. So I think that tank might be due for a rescape. So stay tuned for an update on that. Okay, and I guess that brings us over here to the 210. Now, as you guys may have noticed, uh, the 210 had its one year anniversary uh, just a few months ago. I've kind of been up and down with this thing. At first, it was super stupid easy to keep because uh, I kept the population low and uh, I've been using plants. And, you know, initially it was working out pretty well. I bought this tank chiefly to hold uh, my Bysher which hides in here constantly. I have no video of him right now because I only see him at night now. I'll, every now and then he'll pop his head up or something like that, but I'm so happy to see him. I usually don't whip out a camera. <laughs> and if I try, if I even go to my pocket or something, I'll miss it. But I, I, I watch him swimming around quite a bit. I guess he's getting enough to eat. He looks nice and healthy. He's growing like crazy. Maybe it's a phase he's in right now, but he'll hide. He hides under his log. He comes out at night and, and he'll run around. When I, if I see his, his stomach moving around, usually I'll come out and, and uh, give him a little food, drop, drop some pellets in there and he'll go eat it or whatever frozen food I'm feeding him at the time. As for the other inhabitants, I had to, I had to actually remove a fish. I don't do that very often, but Snapple, that, uh, that parrot cichlid, was, uh, well, one, he was digging a hole to China in the back corner of the aquarium, which, you know, I could live with. I didn't really have anything planted back there, but he was kind of just making this huge ditch. And if he just kind of left it at that, that would have been fine. But then he started terrorizing every other fish in the tank, uh, especially the um, 50 centipoma, my uh, centipoma, my leopard bush fish. He beat up on him pretty good. There were, there were a couple of times I came in and he, uh, the bushfish was really getting battered quite a bit. So, uh, and he was constantly battling with the Ankaras. It was just, it was a stressful thing. He was bugging me quite a bit. I'd raised him up a pretty good ways. Gave him a lot of food, gave him nice and fat. And now someone else can raise him. 
Put him back to the orphanage for you, Snapple. Good luck. So that's one thing that stinks about having a big tank or like uh, dealing with bigger fish. There's like most of the fish that are in here, uh, even the rainbows, just by they're pretty large and they like to swim a lot. Um, keeping them in a smaller tank would just be, I mean, well, you can't do it. So if it doesn't work out in your house, then you don't have a space uh, or means to keep another giant tank, then you got limited options. Thankfully, I've got one of the best aquarium stores in Tennessee to, uh, to take a fish to when it doesn't work out here. I know he'll get rehomed pretty quick. But overall, it, it's been okay. Uh, if the plant, I think if the plants were really growing in a more lush way, then, um, then some of the problems I've had uh, would go away. The other problem is I've been overfeeding. It's been really hard because uh, some, some fish are super aggressive for food and some they maybe aren't as aggressive for food. I can't see. This. If I throw some stuff in at night, I, can, I know, I can tell that uh, the Bicher, Mr. Tubes, is eating it. But I don't know, I can't tell if he's eating a whole lot and how much of it is going straight to the snails that, you know, burrow underneath all of this stuff, this substrate. But knowing, but knowing how much to feed and stuff, it, that's, that's kind of a skill you acquire over time and you pay the price. In the meantime, learning that lesson by uh, getting a lot of algae. Another creature that I initially started this tank with was a large Siamese algae eater that I'd had for a long time that passed away. I transplanted one that I've had in here for a long time. I got him as a real tiny fish in here to eat algae. And uh, he outgrow he's already outgrown this, but uh, he hadn't quite grown in this, but I've decided just to graduate him straight to the big tank. He's just big enough to where Mr. Tubes probably won't eat him, <laughs> I hope. Plus he's super fast. And uh, he's been very, very productive. Uh, things are looking better every single day. Uh, thanks in part to that guy running around and, and eating all the algae. Good job, dude. So my plan for getting this back to back in order is to is to use some plants that I know will do super well in here uh, because they've done super well in all my other tanks. Initially, when I set this thing up, I kind of avoided. I wanted to try some new plants and kind of branch out a little bit more. But honestly, if it looks like this tank you know, over here, that would be fine with me too. <laughs> Obviously I'd cut back and I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it get this overgrown, but man, uh, with growth like that, the, the maintenance becomes very minimal. So I've been adding plants from other tanks, from the 56 gallon, uh, some of these things, some of the crypts from in here, and a couple of other plants. Uh, they're growing faster than the blue and cars can chew on them, and they do chew on them. It doesn't usually kill them, I don't guess, but it, I think the new growth, it probably disturbs it and it, I don't think it likes it much. But I'll be continuously transplanting other plants from around other tanks around the house and putting them in here. It'll be real interesting to see how uh, this tank reacts to that. Any fish of the appropriate size that will go along with each other, I'm gonna to try to migrate uh, to the big tank. Now that Snapple's gone especially and the bio load's been lightened. Now if we move on over to my other shoulder, uh, we'll see the 27 gallon cube. This is a tank I set up a long time ago. I think it was one of my first live stream uh, set up at aquarium videos too. I'm actually having trouble remembering precisely what I used to set this up. I, I believe it was fluorite at the bottom. Then Eco Complete or something like that. Over the years, uh, they've been intertwined to where they're like kind of this weird perfect mix of both through most of the tank. A lot of that's come from uprooting the plants as they've grown and spread and I've had to kind of pull plants out. I've thrown a lot of plants away from this tank um, just because it would grow at just such an enormous rate. I've also set up a whole bunch of tanks uh, from this tank. So if you go back just a couple of videos, uh, I basically pulled out maybe a third uh, of the plant life out of this and went and set up a tank over at a friend's house. It was the Marineland tank. It's actually doing really good. We just went over there the other day to say hello, and uh, we're taking a look. And that's a whole tank set up with just some extra clippings and some extra botanicals and wood that I had sitting around and some sand. 
This has been a really fun tank. It's my wife's favorite tank, and I am not allowed to take it down. How long do planted tanks go is a great question. One of my first and longest lived tanks uh, was a 30 gallon that sat in the exact same place. And it went through periods of being like extraordinarily beautiful as this one has too. But here, a lot of the glass is scratched up um, and to swap it like front to back, which I could do, I guess, would mean a complete rescape. And uh, it, it's actually, you know, I've kind of had it up long enough. Uh, I'm gonna let it live out its life the way it is. Uh, right now, it's, it's zero maintenance. <laughs> And by that, I just mean that I clean the glass up as best I can. I, I, I trim the plants back. I, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll occasionally clean the canister filter. Not as often as you're supposed to, but I occasionally clean the canister filter. And it just goes, and everything's happy in there. I mean, I've got some interesting inhabitants in there, like some bristlenose placos, uh, two different kinds of those. And I've got um, some rummy nose tetras and one last thread fin rainbow. It's sort of been the orphanage that kind of way, you know, home for wayward uh, tetras. <laughs> Another great reason to keep this afloat is I want to break down a tank upstairs and uh, I need a place for the fish to go. So if a few of my tanks seem a bit empty, the reason is uh, I'm trying to bracing for impact. I'm going to have to displace a whole lot of fish. I could actually have a few of them live um, underneath here, you know, in my sump for a little while. All right, now we go upstairs to my boudoir. Yes, the scene of the crime where the face took me out. It has, of course, been removed <laughs> by order of my wife. It, it now lives at my friend's abode uh, where it is making his children very happy with a spooky face with some, uh, some small fish. But my spec five gallon is doing very well. And uh, I'm down to actually one puffer. I had two in there at one point and uh, I just, I haven't seen the other one in a long time and it's presumably dead. There was a small rainbow or a rainbow that was, it's, whose growth had been severely stunted probably from being unable to catch it inside of that thicket. Uh, well, once, once I took that giant thicket of plants out of there, catching him was, was pretty easy. And uh, he's been moved over with his brothers and sisters to a larger tank, the 56 gallon, which we'll get to in a second. So now it's just the little puffer. He's got his own little five gallon tank. It's got a really nice uh, Anubis. That is the original Anubis from the when I planted it, when that tank started. Uh, the video for that is called Mini Gardens. What's funny is the tank's actually starting to go back to where it started with just the large tangle of uh, Anubis and Java fern at the end. But this time it's pretty well grown. Probably my next step with this is to get into that Anubis and really trim out some of the leaves, some of the surplus leaves in there give us some room to grow there's actually some healthy monte carlo at the bottom too which could spread out again and uh start to take over i do have one stranded dwarf sag in there uh it's just one i missed uh, i'll probably just transplant it to another tank so i love the five gallon uh component wise the the light and the tank and everything seem to be doing really well the little dwarf pea puffer in there will eat uh freeze-dried blood worms and uh, of course, I, I put snails in there. I don't think he actually prefers to eat the snails. I mix in other foods where I can too, but he, he tends to ignore anything that's not, uh, you know, sort of a meaty product. And I'm scared to put too much meaty products in there. Although since he ignores the snails for the most part, I think he's eating their offspring uh, because they have plenty to eat as vis-a-vis -vis his leftovers and they don't seem to overpopulate, so maybe there's a mix there. I just don't find a ton of shell. That's kind of the long way of saying he is fat. He is a fat little puffer and he's doing good. And I'm happy, maybe I'll name him. Fatty. Moving on to the 56 gallon, which is home to rainbows that I rescued. Uh, these are actually the offspring of the fish that are in the, the 210. I just happened to see a bunch of babies in there and I netted out as many as I can. Uh, I can't remember what video I, that, that happened in, but I'm sure I explained it before. So I netted out a bunch of babies and I raised them in some smaller tanks. And then when I took the parents down here to set up this tank, I took the babies, I put them in the 56 gallon and uh, I've been raising them up there, hoping that one day maybe bring them down here or off into some other kind of project. Uh, 
these are one of Holly's favorite fish. So I was toying with the idea of maybe, you know, maybe getting a 90 gallon for the other side over here. But that would take up the whole wall and uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're ready for that. <laughs> this is another extremely low maintenance tank simply because the, the plants have uh, really taken hold in there. Everything's growing super well. I, I'm down to no algae in this tank. I got almost no algae. Uh, it's got a thick covering of frog bit, which, uh, and, and the frog bit in here, the roots are all trimmed wet real low. Uh, so I think perhaps the rainbows or the, uh, one of the other tetra colonies that lives in there is, um, is eating the roots to that. And that's kind of interesting. So they don't seem to be doing too well on top. Like the frog bit isn't the healthiest frog bit I've ever seen. But it's still procreating and covering like it should and it doesn't have those like huge roots everywhere. The rainbows could really use a longer tank and I'm hoping to graduate them over to the 210 as fast as possible. Uh, I'm giving them a lot of good food. I'm trying to raise them up right so that they'll be uh, in a good place to kind of join their, their parents in this bigger tank. And as I do that, I'll have a nice stable home to bring in some other fish if I want to change some tanks around. And that's sort of what I'm hoping to do. So as we move into the studio where I shoot most of my videos, you'll see the uh, Fluval EB tank, which is like the spec 2.8 gallon. And it came with some substrate, I believe, and some, some special things for shrimp. The aquascape in there ended up, it was pretty weird. It was a really kind of a weird idea anyway. I just kind of wanted to see what would happen. And it worked out pretty well. I mean, as the plants started to grow, they just ignored the little, little uh, pots that I'd made for them and, and just started to grow all over the place. But... I put some blue shrimp in there and they did good for a number of months and uh, but no matter you know what I did to maintain the tank uh, they didn't end up living very long. As a last ditch effort I moved the last uh, three or four out and I put them in, uh, I put them in my uh, 20 gallon long which would actually be kind of a weird mixed colony but I was hoping they would maybe survive and I could move them off someplace else later but I don't really see them in there much uh, either. Although it's very thick and it's completely possible that they're fine. And I just never see them. This tank had become overrun with duckweed at one point too. So after I pulled, I pulled the shrimp out, uh, the last couple of shrimp that, that were in there, I put them in the 20 gallon and then I took it out back and I did a huge purge. Basically using the back chamber, I pulled out the filter and everything and set it aside. And I used the back chamber to uh, overflow the tank and just continue to move as much duckweed as I could out of the aquarium and, and out uh, into the yard. And that was sort of a last ditch effort to save the tank because quite frankly, uh, I couldn't maintain it. Uh, you couldn't put a net in there. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't, you know, you put your water changer in there or do anything really without jeopardizing getting some of that duckweed into another tank and then having that problem on down the road, just the cross contamination that had to be cleaned. And then I had to be real vigil even for months afterwards. Every time I saw a little bit of duckweed, I'd take that net and I'd just kind of scoop it out of there and just keep the duckweed away. Gotta just cleanse it. So that tank's still viable. I thought about getting a little better uh, and maybe taking it to work or doing something like that. The water at work is really funny. I'd set up a tank for Kevin. Also, uh, Kevin's not with us anymore. He's moved on to uh, another job. And uh, he decided to leave the tank. He said, hey, do you want to take it over? And I was like, okay. So I took the tank and I put, I've set it up in my cube. But there's some, And I've been doing very uh, consistent water changes with it and testing the water. And the, the water, for some reason, is incredibly soft just on the other side of town. So the tap water that I'm using there is, is, is really different, I guess. I tried to alter it in a number of ways. And I've added a whole bunch of frog bit to kind of fight back some algae issues. The fish that are in there seem to be doing fine, um, so I'm not sweating it too much. And overall, the water's clean. It's just incredibly soft, and I don't think the plants are able to grow. I, I just don't think that they're, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's suboptimal for plant growth. So maybe what's in order there is maybe a different type of tank, but that'll be for uh, a future video. So that's going to sit where it is for now until I decide uh, to put a small creature in there or ditch it and take all the plants and put them in something else. Okay, so from that tank, we move over to the small abuse tank. And that thing is definitely going through its, uh, its like terrible twos, its, its beginning stages. I haven't added any fish to it, 
And the reason is, you know, it's getting algae all on its own. I don't have to add food or anything. It's getting, you know, it's working through its own cycle. And I haven't seen a tremendous amount of growth on any of the plants, the, the Anubis or the, the Buse, which I'll never see grow. Or the clover down at the bottom. So uh, nothing's growing in there yet. This is eerily reminiscent of the, the what I set up with the, the 16. So I'm just maintaining it. I'm cleaning it. And I'm not putting any fish in there. I'm just going to let it go until it starts to look really beautiful. Then I'll add some fish or shrimp in there and, and see what happens. It's too small to really add a bunch of fish in there. And so I think these tiny tanks like that are for show. It's like, hey, look at this tiny little uh, garden I made. I don't feel bad at all not subjecting an, an animal to live in that, especially until it's, you know, ready to go. It's an art project, and it's still, uh, it's still in the works. So we'll have to wait and see on that one, too. But when it's cleaned up, it is really fun to look at. So much fun, I bought its big brother, the 10-gallon. And that'll be for a video in the future. As we move over to the 55, you know, the elephant in the room is that I don't like this 55. <laughs> Actually, in a lot of ways, it's really neat, and it's the most natural, a la natural tank that I have. I'm using hang-on-the-back filters for it. Um, they haven't been able to keep up with the amount of wood that's being sloughed off from the giant piece of driftwood that's in there. It's Malaysian driftwood. It's an enormous piece. When I first got it, it was, it was huge, and now it's, it's just big. But I probably won't use that in another aquascape. That might go on my shelf of shame out in the garage. <laughs> or added to some aquascape like years from now. I really want to take that tank down. I think this is where I was at with it uh, in December or October. Whenever I did my last update. I've been gradually transplanting some of the fish out of there into, into other tanks. Uh, but I've got, I've got an idea for where I want to stick everyone. And right now at least that's plausible got one more tank I want to set up and uh, that'll help me shift some of the inhabitants around but of course I've got to wait for it to get going too and I need to wait for it to arrive if it ever does okay now let's move over to the flex 15 uh, this is the one I set up around I just reset it up around December it's my modded out flex 15 gallon tank uh, I added some sand and some botanicals in this to kind of make it a black water ish tank uh, I've kept, I've had to re-add some stuff. It's actually due uh, for some more. I need to boil some more botanicals and throw them in there. This one's got the glass lid and the uh, the Kessel light, and those have been working out really well. Again, this is a tank without a lot of inhabitants. I've got my three checkerboard cichlids. It's got a, actually a, a lot of shrimp. I've been slowly transferring shrimp from the 55 over there. So it's got a lot of cherry red shrimp. It's got a couple of big Amano shrimp that I'm sure are helping out. And I'm planning, and I'm planning on adding the uh, the green neon tetras from the 55 over there, and then that'll probably fill up that tank. I don't want it to get absolutely too full, especially since it's a square and there's not as much room to move back and forth. The checkerboard cichlids have been really neat too. They've matured up pretty well, and uh, they've been really easy to maintain. Now, as we move over to the into the woods tank, which has been like into the woods, out of the woods. I think we're into the jungle now. Uh, I've been gradually, this is my only tank that has CO2 running to it. Uh, it's just a real simple CO2 and Phoenix Planet Plus uh, setup. I'm actually just now getting past the heavy algae stage where I was still fighting hair algae all the time. I'm just now getting past that. And I'm gonna add back in the secondary light and maybe something fancier for the background. But I've gotten really happy with this tank. It's actually one of my heaviest populated tanks. It's got a lot of uh, got a lot of gold ring danios and uh, ember tetras in there, as well as uh, cherry shrimp. We've got a few dwarf uh, quarry cats, uh, some peacock gudgeons in there. A lot of neat fish and a lot of neat plants. Uh, the plant that you see primarily all the, that's kind of making the little canopy all the way around. When I started that tank, I, I found one little sprue of it, and uh, Jennifer Williams sold it to me. She goes, it needs a lot of light and CO2. Kept it in another tank that had CO2, and I kind of kept it alive for a little while. But when that tank broke down, I didn't have much, so I put it in this tank, uh, hoping I could kind of bring it back. All I had left was a sprig about this big, and now uh, it surrounds the entire aquarium. <laughs> Yay, I brought that one back, but 
I don't remember what it's called, so... <laughs> like, like the plants that I got from H2O plants that did really well. Uh, of course, there were quite a few of those, and a lot of them ended up in the Spec 16. Uh, some of them I had to pull out of the, the... He gave me a bunch for this tank, too, like a lot of different mosses. And I've kept a few of them, like little cultures of a few of them, but I put so many different mosses in at the same time, they all got mixed together, and it kind of turned into a mess. But a lot of them, as I trimmed them, they worked their way into the substrate, so I get this random moss just kind of coming out of the substrate uh, now and then. That's pretty interesting. And I guess one of the last tanks is the steampunk tank. It's got one lonely peacock gudgeon in there. And I will probably take it to my orphanage cube. <laughs> I'll put it back here with the other kind of like fish who've lost all their playmates. I do have two other peacock gudgeons, but they're a male and female. And I don't know if the, the female would beat up this other female. So I think it's probably best if we go live in a little community tank like that and finish out our life in there. And I'm only doing that not to break down the steampunk tank, but I'm actually going to rescape it. I'm going to change the interior of it. Uh, maybe keep a beta in there or something else. Uh, I'm going to play with that tank a little bit. I think i just barely begun to really explore what I can do with it. I've been just maintaining it. It's been fine. Like, it hasn't required uh, much maintenance at all. And it's been pretty easy to keep. Um, but I would like to take all the stuff that's out of there. Maybe redo the light. Kind of rethink some of the way some of that stuff worked and uh, do some new effect. Maybe I can do something new and fun with it. It's just a five gallon tank in there. There's not a lot of, not a lot to work with, but we'll see what we can do. I'd also like to physically move it. I want to take it out of that row uh, with those two tanks and put it uh, in front of a window and let uh, maybe nature do some of the work, the light uh, growing the plants. Especially since it's encased in wood. So that's gonna protect it from light quite a bit, from stray light. There you have it, Pectech's long, long video. Long, long update describing all my tanks and all the stuff I got going on. So if you're the type of person that likes to track progress over a period of time, I've got a playlist that's just updates. Okay, so you can see every six months where uh, all these tanks were, roughly. Sometimes it's less than six months, sometimes maybe a month more. So normally nothing just kind of disappears without a, without a uh, explanation, good or bad as far as the product goes. So if you'd like to watch some really early cringy Peck Tech stuff, I would highly encourage you to just go to the bottom of that list and work your way up and just see the entire, uh, both the evolution of my aquariums and of my channel in general. In fact, I've gone to a lot of work, especially recently, to sort of procure some playlists that kind of make more sense. I have one all-encompassing all aquariums playlist because I actually do other types of videos on this channel from time to time. So you can always go through there and see anything I've ever made about aquariums or uh, aqu with aquatic interests in mind. I've got a playlist uh, uh, for all kinds of things. If you look through there, you might see some stuff you want to see. I've even got a playlist of me on other people's channels if you want to see where I've appeared other places and on the news. So if some of you are new to the channel and just want to know more, I encourage you to check out this playlist. They have a lot of, a lot of cool stuff you might like. So if you got a lot of questions on particular items, uh, that's a great way to learn more about any of these tanks. I haven't set up a tank without fully filming it and explaining it in like probably 10 years. So there's a lot of stuff there. Of all the tanks I've known before. Folks, that's where I'm going to call it. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. There you have it, my long, long-winded sound check, sound check. Yeah, I just filmed about 10 minutes of this video with no microphone on. Ah. There were a couple of times I came in and he was really uh, giving the, the bush fish what for. He was, uh, okay, I can say that. I did the, the sponge and everything, yeah. That's a video, that's a video, uh, okay. And if you're the type of person that likes, uh, likes,